factory is the cystic lesion. And I think cystic lesion is a bigger challenge for us because the incidence, if you look at it, you know, on autopsy studies, 25% of adult pancreas have some cyst. Uh, on MRI, about similar 20 to 25% of pancreas done for other indication will have some cyst. Good news is majority of them are benign lesions, but you can have a spectrum of from benign to malignant lesion. Majority of lesions now are um, uh, mucinous cystic neoplasm. IPMN is one lesion which is contributing to more pancreatic surgeries. At my previous hospital, when we looked at our, audited our pancreatic resection, what we learned in two decades, we had doubling in pancreatic surgeries, and it was contributed by cystic neoplasm of the pancreas. IPMN or M MCNs are 60% of those, and you not all of them need surgery. And I think having an idea how do we manage these lesions is where I'm going to drive that point home. So let's start with intraductal papillary and mucinous neoplasm because these are the common lesions you will encounter in your practice. Now, most cystic neoplasm are common in women, but IPMNs are more common in men, in older men. Uh, depending on the location, so these are mucin secreting tumors, and I just want to tell you that there is some confusion. The duct dilatation or a cyst is not the tumor. Cyst is the mucin dilating the ducts. Tumor are these small papillary projections along the mucosa which is secreting mucin. So depending on where this is, if it's involving the side branch, you know, we call it as side branch, the IPMN, which is preferentially involving side branch. Once it involves main duct, all of them, whether it is a diffuse main duct involvement, a partial main duct involvement, or a main duct with side branch involvement, all of them follow and come in the category of main duct IPMN. Why that stratification is important? because risk of cancer is much higher in main duct lesion. 60% of main duct lesion at the time of diagnosis will be malignant or will have malignant potential, whereas majority of side branch lesions are benign. So it's that spectrum. So stratifying them into main duct versus side branch is very important. Now this is a very important slide because that drives how we manage IPMN patients. So IPMN patients go through a spectrum of, you know, hyperplasia to adenoma, then carcinoma to invasive cancer. So it's a very predictable, slow process. So if patient is older, we detect a benign IPMN, you know it will take 15 to 20 years for that patient to turn into malignant. So you can easily leave them alone. So that type of a trajectory and a slow growth is what is typical of IPMN. And this tells you why that one of the celebrity lived so long with IPMN compared to other two types of pancreatic cancer. So let's look at these two cases to drive that point home. So these are patient with the side branch IPMNs. This is August 2006. You see a unilocular cyst with slightly thick wall. And I will come to that morphological feature later on why that's important. That's from 2006 to 2010, minimal change. It's much thicker wall. This is 2016. Now it has invasive cancer, which was still resected. Vessels were not involved. So that's the slow progression on IPMN. So if you follow them, you can really capture these tumors early on. So there is much more safety window to capture them. This is another example of a patient who had an IPMN um, in the unseenate process. Uh, in 2006, that is 2011, we can see some solid component and year over time, which was missed, and here we have a soft tissue encasing vascular structure. This come down to an important point I mentioned in my first talk is ignore the obvious. Look at rest of the pancreas. We focus too much on the cyst. We look at the size of the cyst and we forget that there is a infiltrative component which is outside so that's but slow slow process that's why we can monitor these cases um, safely uh, this is the data from my previous institute where we did a lot of research on IPMN patient the point of this study is small IPMNs less than three centimeter majority of them benign invasive cancers are uncommon 
That's why in the guidelines, if the lesion is less than three centimeter in asymptomatic patient, we can safely monitor these patients uh, using imaging. And the choice of imaging can depend on CTMR, depending on the availability of these studies. Now, having, having given that perspective on pancreatic cystic lesion, let's come to the guidelines. How do we manage this cystic lesion? Because that's what your referring physician will ask, okay, what does guideline dictates? Now, pancreatic cyst is one problem where there are more guidelines than actually types of lesion. You know, every country has their own guidelines. But I would say two guidelines which are followed. One is the American College of Radiology and second is the consensus guideline. Um, those are the two ones that are followed. Now, there is a lot of commonality between the guidelines. I think most guidelines are similar in terms of management. But I will just share some of the differences that exist. So first thing you look at is patient uh, the cyst morphology. So the, approach this more like a Bosnia classification. So where more complexity you see in the cyst, more likelihood of malignancy. So what is that complexity? If lesion is micro, macro cyst, that means you can see few compartments. That raises the risk because it's more likely MCN. Anytime there is a solid component in a cyst, there is higher probability of malignancy. And it goes without saying anytime pancreatic duct is dilated, as we discussed earlier, it is malignant. So in absence of pancreatic duct dilatation, if you are looking at cyst morphology, macro cyst or solid component is malignant. A thin walled unilocular lesion tends to be benign, but a thick wall lesion is where you worry about. Those can be malignant. So thin versus thick wall is the critical differentiation for year. This is a thick wall, even if there were no septations you will worry about this lesion having a high likelihood of being malignant. This is pretty obvious as a solid component. Then comes another category, which is a microcystic neoplasm. We also call them serocystinomas. Most of them have very traditional morphology. When in doubt, you can really characterize them on MR if CT is not typical. So what are the risk features when you're looking at? We talked about the cyst problem. We look at mural nodule. Um, you know, duct dilatation in main duct IPMN, duct dilatation, and I said it's not the duct which is problem, it is the tumor implants within the duct, you need to identify those because surgeons don't do total pancreatectomy. What they will do is they will preserve some pancreas. So if you identify tumors here, they will do Whipple procedure and will leave like a few centimeter, they will cut the pancreas, they will do frozen section, and if it is negative, uh, they will just, you know, leave it at that. So not only dilatation of duct, but identifying tumor foci. Now, we cannot always recognize tiny foci. So what surgeons do is they do a pediatric, they pass a pediatric endoscope within the pancreatic duct to look for those tumor foci before they resect. Enhancing wall is a bad sign. Again, this is something you need to keep in mind in a cystic lesion, anything, a sick, thick wall or enhancing wall is a bad sign. Duct dilatation is obviously. These are some features if you see, that means it's aggressive lesion. This is a busy slide, and I will give you the crux of management of pancreatic cystic lesion. The first thing I said is symptoms. Anytime patient has symptoms which could be attributed to the cyst, something has to be done. At least minimum, at the minimum, is aspiration of pancreatic cyst. Second thing is cyst morphology. If cyst morphology has all those features that I described, which they will intervene, more than likely resect or at least biopsy. The third thing you have to look at is the pancreatic duct changes. If in absence of those, if it's an incidental lesion, if it's less than three centimeter lesion, those are the ones we follow them. And depending on the size, if it's less than one centimeter, the risk is much lower. That's the interval. Uh, you know, you can have a longer interval for a one to two year follow up and maximum five year if everything is stable, you leave it alone. And as the lesion size goes up, your, your follow up interval increases as well. So that's the main point of this slide is morphology is bad, symptoms, all those things and size greater than three centimeter, all those three things are important. Now I will emphasize on very important point is more than size, it's morphology. And again, when you're looking at pancreatic cystic lesion, just ignore the obvious, look at elsewhere. Like these are three cases where we have a large lesion here and a small lesion. 
So by default, you would focus on a larger lesion. But when you look at the smaller lesion, has a thick enhancing wall. So this is the highest risk, not this one. So you will target this lesion for intervention surgery. This lesion is also three centimeter. You will focus on the size, but look at the thick irregular margin. That is more important. This lesion is also three centimeter. You will say, oh, side branch IPMN less than three centimeter, but look at thick enhancing walls. So morphology trumps size. So always look at morphology in absence of those. And in absence of symptoms, then the size comes in picture. I hope I made that point pretty clear to you all.